Hi everyone, welcome again. Sorry about the slight uh, delay. Sound are uh, yeah. turn it off. Uh, all right, now I think it's more silent. So, uh, hi everyone. This was from last time. All right, everybody remembers. I hope. How should White continue here? I will just yeah. ask you for. One move, please turn off microphones. Those who have microphones on, please turn them off. All right. Yeah, exactly. Yugoslavian bird circle, chess art, tactical magician, kind king, Sam elephant, chess genius, skilled saber, Adi chess, Mecha Mortis, Gordon, Sui Random. We have some people who fell in the trap also. Uh, who else got it right? Uh, Princess Megan, that's correct. Uh, very important detail here. There is one move which looks more tempting than the others. But uh, it's not the right move. Pikachu, you also got it. Congratulations. Fastest here was Yugoslavian Berserker. Got it in like one second. So please go ahead, Yugoslavian. What should White play here? Exactly. We start with King C6, setting up the important threat of check followed by check. Uh, but <laughs> what happened, Chesar? Yeah, King D6. This is not correct because in that case, Black can save their skin by F6. So in this way... Uh, yeah, they are able to, to make a draw here. The king can, can then escape. But if we start with king c6 instead, actually the position was different now, the one that we looked at. Yeah, but this is still the same. It's the same thing. But we had the same position, I think, which was like more striking. We had it with a rook on e5, if I'm not mistaken. We came across this position. And here it was extremely tempting to play king d6. We would think that if we do that, we hit the rook and we threaten mate. But then again, they can play... Uh, f6 right but uh, here again king c6 is the right choice and then rook check and d6 so yeah that was from last time so i thought that uh, we looked at so much rook end games last time so that this time we should look at some other kinds of end games right and i wanted to bring up in the first place some end games with the uh, rook and the minor piece versus a rook and minor piece so we will start with the game from the us championships a few years ago and I think it's a very interesting battle. You all remember the topic, right? We're talking about taking our chances. End games, which supposedly are drawn by perfect play. Stockfish is saying, saying zero, 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 and so on. However, when humans play, things are a little different. And there are many pitfalls. And we should try to like make our opponents uh, co complicate uh, their life, so to speak. We will try to make them... Uh, make mistakes and so on. So that's what this is about. Even if the endgame is drawn, we should try to win it. So, all right, here we go. Ramirez with white, Wesley Saw with the black pieces. And uh, I'll quiz you for Wesley Saw's clever continuation here. Let's see if you can find the way he continued here. I will give you one minute. Uh, yeah, one minute. And uh, just uh, take your time and think about it. Don't send me immediately. Think about it. Black is having the upper hand in this uh, opposite color bishops and games with rook on the board. Uh, but uh, how to progress here? How can you make life a little more difficult for your opponents? Uh, interesting move, uh, Elephant uh, Chess Genius. You're very close. You're very close. Uh, I see. I can get the point there, Skilled Saber, Gordon, Yugoslavian. Okay, so Randall, you got it. You're playing in the footsteps of Wesley Saw. That's not bad. Kind King Sam, congratulations, you also got it. So let's see if you can... Oh, a lot of people want to push the other pawn. So yeah, you all understood that it's something about pushing these pawns, right? Uh, in the most uh, demanding way for white. Try to make them make a mistake. Kwoki, you're the third winner here. Congratulations, we have three winners so far. Uh, some people were close. Oh, I see. Some people want to play rook b7. Why do they want to play rook b7? Rook b7, I go bishop c6, right? So, oh, maybe you want to like put the rook on e7? Yeah, interesting, interesting. I can I can see the point. Uh, hi, what did I miss? Yeah, nothing really. We just uh, went over last uh, time's last uh, position, uh, Sarsak. And now we're about talking about something else. I wanted to show you some end games with rook and the minor piece. So let's uh, see what Sui Random has to say about this. How can Black try to squeeze out something from this apparently drawish endgame, which was your first move here, 
Exactly. G4, as always, when you have a pawn majority, sooner or later you will try to convert them into passed pawn. So G4, clever move. Let's bring up the game here. Give me just one moment. They took a sensible move, of course, to trade pawns and so on. And here White played F takes G4. This was not a good idea. Uh, Wesley so hurried to play here E4, of course. Uh, breakthrough and after you can see the bishop is perfectly placed on this diagonal white played king e2 and the next move is not difficult f4 yeah thanks Sui. exactly that's the right way to go here uh, you can see that by now actually white is a pawn up but black has a very strong initiative we will come back to this very soon i just wanted to talk a little about what happened what could have happened if white defended better so g4 is a good uh, move some people were saying here e4 i guess if you go e4 i can understand the idea i guess you hoped to play something like f4 maybe to put the king on e5 that i could certainly understand what would white do against that well uh, maybe i can like activate my rook somehow uh, i wonder how black progress is if i play something like rook a6 oh bishop f5 says something like yeah maybe uh, but maybe you can play something like this and you can put the bishop over here. I'm just guessing now. I'm just guessing that it won't be that easy for white to, for black to progress here. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, maybe, yeah. But, or, ah, look, these uh, <laughs> arrows are not mine. It's so random who is painting the board here. Exactly. Bishop g6 tried to provoke h4 so that we can come back and blockade on the light squares. Yeah, I like your way of thinking, uh, Sui. That makes a lot of sense. So, E4, possible, but probably we should do it the other way around, push the G-pawn so as to liberate these two pawns. Uh, rook B7 was also proposed by some people. I'm not completely sure what would be White's move here. You know what? I'm almost tempted to play Rook A6 here. I think that could, could be an interesting move. Because if you take, I take, and somehow I like this for White. I have the passed pawn and so on. Um, we could also argue that Black's bishop is way more active than White's. No, sorry. So we should probably not trade the, the bishops, right? So, yeah, I vote for uh, uh, Wesley Sauce and Sui Random's uh, proposal here, g4. That's how the game went. White took on g4, and after h takes g4, this was good for white to trade off the h-pawn. The lesser pawns, the better for the defender, but the next move was a very bad mistake. Here, white had to play something better here. So this is the moment where computers will say equal, but you have to think like a computer here. So, uh, anyone, any idea? Exactly, Met Meta Mortis, you got it. That's what we should play here. Please go ahead. That's the move that uh, Ramirez didn't play, and this might have saved his game, right? This move was very important because somehow we can um, restrict Black's king later on. Like, one, one variation here was uh, if you play, for example, king g5, you can take... But this time, as you can see, we don't have f4 anymore because the rook is there. So it's something about restriction. I don't know if it's of the king or if it's of the other pieces. You can also see that the rook takes, it falls to rook takes e4. But this, I would say, it's not exactly obvious, no, that you should play rook a4 here. Uh, at least for Ramirez, it was not. And uh, he went on to lose this game. So that was the way in which you could save the game. Uh, however, in the game, this went like that. Now, very important move here, e4, king e2 f4 so again it's very difficult for for white last chance probably last chance here is to play rook a6 um yeah why is rook a6 and then put the bishop on c6 and just wait wait to see what black has in mind it's still unpleasant no but uh, this would have been a chance perhaps for white i don't know if you can somehow trade the rooks perhaps at some at some point that should favor white right if i'm not mistaken to trade off the rooks um so that was perhaps the last chance. Let's see how the game went uh, for a draw. Yeah, of course. So f4 was played in the game and white played here g5. And it's interesting that at this point we will bring up a new quiz here. But okay, it's not so, it's not so difficult. But uh, let's see. I will quiz you for the whole variation here. I blindly trust you guys that you will find the right solution. Let's see. It's very nice. This game, it's actually, yeah. One of my favorites uh, as for this kind of material. So you get one minute uh, 15, all right? I think this is drawish, says Sarsak. Yeah, maybe if you have Stockfish plugged in. But if you play, if you sit there with five minutes on the clock, that's a different story, right? So that's what we're talking about. All right. 
how can black take home this game if you take the pawn beware that uh, we, we learned something today we learned that we can use the rook along a rank right you can put the rook on the fourth rank and control black's movement so be prepared for that if you take my pawn I will probably play rook a4. I, I'm just telling you that before you send the move. So we random, you got it again. Uh, maybe so random. Is, is that Wesley So after all who is joining us here? Who, who knows all the moves? Okay, a lot of people were close. I, I like Kevabs, Tactical Magician, HDI Chess, Yugoslav and Gordon. You took the pawn with the rook. Yeah, well, oh, really? You, you sacked the bishop there. Interesting. So if Wesley didn't do that... Yeah, what might be the reason? I must say that's very tempting what you're saying. Uh huh. Charles and Ryan, you're extremely close. Consider yourself winners, but think which is the best angle for that rook in the very end. All right. So uh, who else? MM Thinker, you're also ex extremely close. MM Thinker, consider the best way to put the, key, the rook there in the end. So let's let's ask somebody of those who got up to move five. Let's ask Charles. All right, Charles, please go ahead. Show us. The whole variation here, how to continue with the black pieces here, how to squeeze out something from this endgame. So, do we take the pawn? No, we don't take the pawn. Charles has noticed that if we take the pawn, white could again play this move rook a4. Very clever move, because if black is forced to play e3, well, then they don't have the same potential anymore. They would very much like to keep the two pawns on the fourth rank. Maybe white can like put the king here, and it's not so easy to, to win anymore, I think. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. So, king e5, much stronger. Light square blockade, exactly, kind king sam. Blockades are very important in this kind of endgame. All right, king e5. Uh, it's me to play. I play here. Yeah, how does the variation go? g6, is that what we played? Sorry, guys, I don't even remember this. Uh, how, how did the variation go? Yeah, g6 is, is what uh, Ramirez played. Yeah, exactly. So, please go ahead, uh, Charles. Yeah, we have to take care of that pawn. White desperately starts a counterattack. And at this point, some exactly that's what Wesley Saw played. Some people wanted to take the pawn. So I wonder if it transposes or if White can actually take here. I mean, it could transpose if we play Bishop H3. But you're also giving me an extra chance to play like this. I wonder, do I get killed here? I guess I I do. No, that's what those who said this. You were planning this, right? In E3, and and it's over. Um, I have no chance here, right? If I play like rook b8 and I try to cover this way. Um, I'm asking, I'm asking. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. You're going to play e3 and I play rook e8. I'm just guessing. Maybe also for Wesley, so not so easy to calculate all this at the board, right? I can see that, for example, this pawn might also run and so on. King d4, I suppose. No? Yeah, exactly, Metro Mortis. That's my approach also. Bishop c5 is just simpler, says Metro Mortis. So, king d4, what would happen here if I go b6, e2, king e1, king e rook g1, king d2? Yeah, I think I can run here, right? Well, I didn't calculate very quickly. I mean, I didn't calculate very well. Maybe you just play rook b2 and I'm, I'm done, no? Maybe. Wow. Wow, this was very complex. I have bishop f5, though. Yeah, exactly, Sartak. Maybe white should go one step further, no? Maybe we should go like one step, like over here instead to dark square. I don't know. Is this winning for white? For black? Rook a2 was stronger, says tactical magician. Yeah, I think so, too. I think this is already winning for black. But uh, my point is, like Metamorti said, this is very easy to figure out, perhaps, when you move the pieces. But imagine sitting there and with... The clock ticking. Uh, and also you give white. White could always play bishop h3, bail out if they like. So I'm with uh, Charles here, bishop c5. I think that's a better move. So let's continue, Charles. How did the game go here after bishop c5, white played b6? Uh, please go ahead, Charles, because the, la the last part is very pretty. It looks like if white is about to queen this pawn, but of course, if I go b7... Yeah, the rook gets there, no? In the right angle. So in the game, they played bishop h3. Those of you who said rook g7 and rook g8, look at Charles' move here. Activity in the endgame, right? Rook g3. Very pretty, very pretty move. We all know that the best angle for the rook when fighting against a passed pawn is behind the pawn, right? So that's the end of it. If I now go b7, you can see that black's rook is catching the pawn. That's how the game went. Bishop c8, 
Uh, can I still bring this up? Bishop c8, rook b2, and uh, yeah, king d1, e3. Uh, Wesley Sauce, uh, how can I say? Uh, practical play paid off in the end. Uh, now black is actually winning here. Uh, the pawn is very strong. You can see already concrete threats and so on. They played king c1, bishop d4, bishop g4, and rook takes b7, finishing off that pawn. The advantage doesn't go away. And yeah, we don't have to see the... Oh, sorry. We don't have to see the rest, maybe. It went like this. Yeah, let's see here. He brought in the king and some patience here by Wesley Saw, so and it's game over. So, yeah, that's how this uh, game went. Let's uh, go back again. I have a warning here for I like kebabs. If you start talking a lot in the chat, I think Greg Shahadi will throw you out again. So please behave well, focus on the board. Be, feel free to add comments, but something related to what we're looking at and not other stuff that uh, you can perhaps, uh, you can chat about that in some other uh, environment, right? But not here in the classroom. So this is how we got there. This is the initial position of this endgame. Uh, Wesley Saw played here the very nice move, g4, trying to create a passed pawn on the e-file. And uh, that's what happened here after pawn takes, pawn takes. And White should have played this move, rook a4, but that was not so easy to see in the game they played. F takes, g4, and e4 later on, f4. Aha. So that's what happened in this game. He took his chances here, Wesley Saw, and he was rewarded for that. Please remember this very nice rook maneuver. I must say, I, I really like it the way he played here after. Let's see how this went. Let's do it again. King e2, f4, g5, uh, king e5. He didn't take the pawn, right? And then we bring in the rook like, like this. Yeah, very uh, aesthetic uh, maneuver. Okay, I had another uh, endgame of this kind. Uh, rooks and opposite color bishops. But it's so long that I wanted to just show you a few parts of it. It was played in this recent uh, Women's Grand Prix. Alexandra Kostenyuk with the white pieces and Anna Muzichuk with the black pieces. I thought it was a very interesting game, but uh, let me just show you a few moments, all right? So it starts like this. Start like this. You can see white is a pawn up. Some Petrov, I think, or maybe Roy Lopez, uh, they ended up like this. You would think that the draw is near, but actually. White has some chances still. If you remove the rooks, probably not so difficult to make a draw with black, but when rooks are on, there are always more chances for, for a win than in, than in the pure opposite color bishops endgame. So at this moment, black played b5. All right. What should white play here? That's right, uh, chess art, Charles. That's exactly what I wanted. Oh, so many people want to play b3. Interesting. She played that later. Okay, it's probably not a mistake, but maybe you lose some stability now in the position. Um, Kostenyuk played something else. Please go ahead, uh, chess alt, which was your move here. So that's like, exactly. That's like first lesson. No, first lesson. If you want to win your endgames, your drawn endgames, so to speak, uh, the more pawns, on the board, the better for the attacking side, right? For the stronger side. This, this everybody knows, right? Don't trade off pawns, that helps your opponent. Believe me that this is very important in the long run. You could say that partly thanks to this, Kostenyuk later on managed to win this game. If you played other stuff here, like b3, for example, I think I moved the bishop to f7 and I put my rook on c8. Uh, maybe you lose some stability on this side. So it's better if you keep perhaps the stability on the king side, queen side so that you can put the bishop on d4 protected by your pawn on c3 and so on. So, all right, that was my first, uh, like first photo from this, from this game. Okay, we had many other moves here. Some people said bishop c5, for example. I would play rook c8 and uh, I believe I'm benefiting from this pressure. I don't know, maybe I can take also the pawn and so on. Bishop e5 and this pawn is hanging and things like that. So a5, believe me, this is... A very good move to play at this point. All right, we will we will continue. We will continue. We're right now at move twenty. We will move on. You, we will see quickly how Kostenyuk slowly but safely improves her position. It's okay to trade one rook, but we should keep the other rook, of course, to have 
winning chances here. So that's how they played here. Kings joined the game. Black puts the pawn. In this endgame, they say it's good to put your pawns actually on the same color as your bishop. It's easier to defend them. But by the way, this pawn is not so easy to defend from this side anymore. It doesn't have many squares and so on, uh, which might be important later. All right, let's continue. Uh, let me see. We are at move 26. Some slow play here, some slow play. Black is waiting a little. Here you can see that white perhaps might play c3 later on to uh, keep stability for their bishop. All right. So black is playing for a draw. White is still struggling to show something here. But the next move that Kostenyuk played, I think is important. So I would like to quiz you on the next move. Let's see if I can get this right. Uh, let me see if I can get this right. Yeah, I'll ask you just for for two moves here, all right? Yeah, today's subject, uh, taking our chances. We're looking at some endgames which are supposedly drawn, but they were won anyway in practical chess because, uh, yeah, humans make mistakes. That's right, Yugoslavian Berserker, you got it. That's what Kostenyuk did in the game. B3, a lot of people say. Interesting move, yeah. Can I go Rook C8? Uh, how can you progress there? Not clear to me. Only Yugoslavian Berserker managed to go too little time. I know, it's because I thought we could use, look at several examples, no? Uh, that's why I'm doing it so quickly. All right, Elephant Chess Genius, I like Kevlar's and Princess Megan. You're very close also, but Kostenyuk didn't give away the pawn on, on C2, right? But you got the right idea. Okay, Yugoslavian, you're the only winner here, so please go ahead. Uh, how did Black continue here? Please go ahead. Rook T1, what a mysterious, mysterious move. Well, not so much now, because she has noticed that she, she should try to open up the G file. No matter what happens, it will be good for something, right? Uh, many people were saying B3. I guess the plan is to go rook C, uh, go C4, but maybe I can go Rook C8. Now you can't play C4. I'm threatening this. Uh, it won't be that easy, I think, for, for White to, to progress here. Yeah, B4, you can keep that for later. That compromises your uh, dynamics and so on. So... Uh, you're right, uh, Yugoslavian, rook g1, and after bishop f5, some people wanted to play g4, but Yugoslavian Berserker simply played c3. Yeah, perfect. In this way, we keep everything under control. If I play something like bishop d3, uh, Yugoslavian, your next move is not difficult to understand. Not letting me play rook e2. Oh, really? Oh, you play that anyway? Wow, I didn't notice that. I wouldn't do that. I would just play, okay, maybe you're right, but else you could just go back with the bishop, right? And then you go g4, and we have some action coming up. Uh, please, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that uh, white is winning here or anything. I'm just saying that chances increase slightly, all right? Chances increase if you play like this. You give your opponent some chances to go wrong and so on. So some people wanted to play g4 here. I get the point, but maybe we shouldn't give away the pawn like that if we can, if we can keep it. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you wanted to play rook c1. I don't know if I can go like rook c8 here, perhaps. Uh, somehow try to uh, trade the rooks, no? To trade the bishops, sorry. No reason to give up on uh, Sarsak. Exactly, that's what Kostenyuk thought also, because she played at this point. Uh, let's see if I can come back to the example here. Uh, where are we? Where are we? C3, yeah. So back to, back to business here. Black played the move bishop c8, a little passive. And of course, uh, Alexandra wanted to play g4 here, but first we had some maneuvering. I don't know if after g4 perhaps there is some problem with rook e4. I think this is what black had uh, intended perhaps, if king f3 bishop e7. Maybe that's the reason why they put the, the, the bishop there. I don't know. So after bishop c8, white played bishop b6 first, rook e7, bishop e3, some going here and going there, and now finally now we strike with g4 now that the bishop is blocking the rook, right? So g4, take rook c7, and after G5, we have reached a critical moment. At this moment, the game is decided, okay? It's still within drawing boundaries, but at this point, Black makes a huge mistake and loses the game. So, uh, anyone, what do you think Black should play here? What would you play with Black? Kind King Sam says G6. Yeah, maybe. It's, it's better than what they played in the game. Aha. Uh -huh. B4. Rook, no, I, I don't want a losing move. Yeah, you're right, uh, Chris. That's what uh, they should have played here. Pawn takes and then play g6, and you still have chances to save this game, right? 
be a little careful with bishop f5 though careful with h5 in those cases so white will continue to press but black has good chances of uh, making a draw here in the game terrible mistake rook c4 why was that a bad idea yeah she uh, she came under she cracked under the time pressure here so what did white play here yeah should i ask everybody for this or it's i guess it's very simple no but okay i'll ask you anyway I'll give you just uh, 20 seconds, okay? What did White play here? Oh, interesting move, tactical. I can give you half a point for that. Uh huh. Uh, interesting. Nobody plays like. Uh, okay, we have some people who played in very similar. Uh huh. Uh, Chris Bandari, Gordon, I like Kebabs, Alg, HDHS, Awesome, O, and Pikachu. All right, that's uh, fine also. Please go ahead, uh, Chris, you were fastest here. How can white continue here? Aha, so by this move, we fix the weakness on g7, right? Now, for sure, we have a lot of play going on here. She didn't play h5. Honestly, I, I don't know uh, what might be the reason. Maybe I can play something like rook h4. Is that possible? Yeah, I'll take and I'll play. I mean, I know it looks ugly now, but maybe this is better than the game. I would think it's better than the game. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. This looks very scary. I, I agree. Can I, like, bring the rook here? and, Or uh, am I just lost here? If you say I'm lost here, I, I will believe you. Yeah, but maybe it's very difficult for black to defend here. Uh, no idea, really. What if I bring the rook to the seventh rank? Is that making sense? Or What if I bring it here, by the way? Not sure I understand this endgame, guys. Uh, probably you can explain it to me. Oh, you want to take this pawn? Interesting. Uh huh. Wow, maybe. But I mean, your bishop is very passive, no? So uh, you want to play rook d1 and rook d6 and go and take that pawn. But there are other pawns on the board, right? So I can, like, take here and. Well, I don't know. Probably this is not going to work. <laughs> no idea what's going on here. Um, rook a2, rook d7. It's funny that I can save myself like that, no? I don't know, can I play this or...? Okay, maybe I'm not playing properly. Yeah, me neither, I don't know. Uh, I don't have an idea what's, if this is going to work or no. I feel like I'm under a lot of pressure with black. But uh, maybe I can save it. Yeah, bishop b4 at some point and rook d6 maybe. All right, the game continues. Bishop b4, there we go. Now I cannot take the pawn. If I play something like this, is that making sense? Or let me know if I blunder something, all right? At least material is okay. So I guess I can take the pawn now and I should get going here, I think. I should start running. So I don't know. No idea, really. I'm happy that I can play bishop d5. When the pawn is getting closer, I'm very happy to play bishop d5. I think I can make a draw here. I think black is better. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, let's uh, let's continue. Interesting plan by Chris, but uh, Kostenyuk didn't want to risk like that. I think she already thought that she achieved quite a lot by this. So she didn't want to risk things. She didn't play h5. She played something else. So anyway, what do you think White played here? Well, if they didn't play h5, what did they play? Of course, uh, Ryan, you're right. Bishop d4. So in this way, we limit uh, black a little also, right? Now you can see that Maybe this, and maybe we can play like that and take the pawn and so on. Uh, we have something to play for. Don't forget what I told you in the first place. This is very important. You will probably not win the game only on the king side. You need something else, no? Later on in the game. So let's let's continue. Let's continue very quickly here. Rook c8 was played in the game. King g3, don't forget active king in the end game. We will move forward here. Rook d1, king e6, bishop e3. A lot of patience in these endgames. Bishop here, bishop there, just to show who is ruling in this endgame. King g4, now finally we continue with our business here. So, uh, anyone, what do you think white played at this point? Exactly, l008, h5, of course. We're getting closer and closer to pushing h6 at some point. This is very unpleasant for, uh, for black. I had a look at some variations here. In the game, they played f5, which doesn't look ugly. I mean, doesn't look nice. I mean, it looks very ugly to open up for the bishop like that. So I was asking myself, what happens if black just waits here? If you play something like this, for example. 
So together with Stockfish, we looked at some variations here. Rook d2, first move to prevent bishop e2. And after bishop d5, Stockfish had something very interesting to tell me. And uh, that's your next mission here, guys. So let's see if you can find what our silicon friend found here as well. Let's see. Uh, let's see if you can go in Stockfish footsteps this time. All right. Let's see who can go in the footsteps of Stockfish. Yeah, you always complain that I don't give you enough time. So here you are, 1 minute 30. All right. Some more time. Oh, I see. Uh, if you go g7, I go rook g8. And if you go h6, I go king f7. And if you take on d5, I go king g6. <laughs> but I think that's winning a tactical L and Gordon. I think you're winning in your way. Uh huh. Okay. Patriots, you got it. Yeah, okay. I'm not saying this is the only variation, but it's what Stockfish told us. Chess art, you're making a big blunder there when you were so close. Uh huh. What a pity, no? So close. HDI chess, that's an interesting move that you're providing. Rook takes g7, HDI chess. Oh, you want to play? No, I don't follow. Okay, so we have only one winner here. Only Patriots got this one. Uh huh. Rook e2 check. Yeah, that might also work. I guess King d7. Okay, let's see. Someone else. So rookie two, no, not a bad move, of course. But there might be a forced win here. There might be a forced win. G7 on move two. If you play that, I'm hoping I can go rook g8. Yeah, we will talk about that. H6, bishop e4. I think that's the reason why you shouldn't play like that. Well, <laughs> I'm not so sure. We will talk about it, all right? We will We will have a look. You have rook e2 there also. So please go ahead. So random, you got it also. Yeah, most of you got the idea, of course. Patriots, please go ahead. Show us the fantastic solution here. Bishop takes f6. First, we sacrifice the bishop, and then we sacrifice the exchange also. Aha, I have to take back. By now, the pawns are too strong, it would seem, but Black's king can get back. Fortunately, in this endgame, <laughs> we will actually... Winning the pawn end game. Aha, that's right. H7, I have to take like this. And uh, unfortunately, white king is, is getting there closer. Yeah, it's free. It's an easy win. Right, nice. Thanks, uh, Patriots. If you played, uh, what did you say here? Some people were saying g7 at this point. If you play g7 here, I go rook g8. You go h6. And I was hoping to go bishop e4. Well... I'm not sure though. You will play rook e2, I suppose. And can I go like king f7 here? It, it, is this crazy like, to play like that? Maybe. So if you take, I wanted to play this. But yeah, wake me up if I miss something here. Oh, you're winning with rook e6, maybe. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, this, this is terrible. Yeah, of course. Okay, so if I play f5, you go king g5. So am I lost here anyway? King f7? Yeah, it seems like if white is white is winning, no? h7 and... I'm not so sure. But it seems like this is winning, no? Something like this. And if rook here... Wow, this is very confusing. Correct me if I missed something. Seems so. Yeah, please go ahead, uh, uh, Sarthak. What's your question? I also have many questions about this endgame. Maybe there is no rush to play this move, by the way. There is no rush, right? Maybe we can improve in some other way. Um, knight promotion. Yeah, rook h2, says L. Yeah, that's, that looks like a nice move. I see. I don't know if I can play like this and I can hope that I... Like, if you take, I put my bishop here. Is that like hope for survival? I think so, no? I think so. So, anyway. Yeah, complex variation. But I like more the variation that... Uh, Patriots uh, provided now with bishop takes and rook takes and g7. Anyway, that was that was one variation that that Stockfish and me looked at. Now back to back to the game. I guess you're tired of this game already, so we will finish it off. Uh, in the game, they played a move that I I don't think it can be correct. Now they played. Oh, sorry, they played uh, f. Uh, how is it f uh, five? Yeah, th this cannot be correct, right? So this was easy for Kostenyuk. 
King G5. Oh, that's why they played it because they entered. Oh, I entered. Uh, and now I remember they entered uh, uh, opposite color bishops endgame. Right. So here, I have a question for you. Can you provide me with with a move which is not bishop takes g7? If I tell you that Kostenyuk played something else, what did she play? Bishop f6. Who is moving the pieces here? Patriots. Uh, wow, that's a funny move. I don't know. Can I play like f4? I don't think you have any reason to play like that, uh, Patriots. No. So, anyone. b4. That's right, uh, Satak. She played b4 instead. Why did she do that? Well, because she wanted to fix the weakness here, right? Very clever. This was also working, but it's nicer what she played before, I think. Uh, now there is no no way back. By now it's a winning endgame. Bishop b3, bishop takes, bishop c4. Please notice, without these pawns, probably this would be a draw. Bishop d4 and white is about to bring in the king like that, I think. That's the plan here. They played uh, f4 in the game. White just took on f4 and yeah, the rest was not so interesting. This is how the game Ended. By the way, if I play bishop d3, if I just wait, what would the white play here? Anyone? Or should I quiz you for this? Oh, nice. Uh, thanks, uh, Patriots. Exactly. c4, the principle of two weaknesses. As you can see, at this point, black cannot cope with both uh, pawns here. Uh, yeah, whatever I play here, I lose, no? Not so difficult to understand this, right? Go for it, Patriots. That's right. Rook promotion, of course. Very clever. Uh -huh. And white wins. So, yeah, you see? Uh, smart pawn, no? Smart pawn is a pawn. Uh, that's the way to do it. Look from the very beginning. B5 was played. Maybe that was not the right move. I don't know. Maybe it was better to just put the bishop somewhere and, and, and the, put the rooks in the middle or something. But B5 was played and white played A5. They actually won the game later on by this move. And please remember that once you're about to uh, to look for these uh, opportunities, try to create like a new front. That's what she did here, Rook G1, trying to go G4. Right, let's uh, move on. I found another interesting endgame uh, which I wanted to share with you, which is objectively drawn, and uh, it was won anyway. So. Let's see what you think about this endgame. A different story, completely different story. This is our position here in a game between Haira Petyan with white and Atahan with the black pieces tournament played, yeah, like a few weeks ago, I think. So black has just played here knight g5, I think. The knight just went like that. You can see that black is about to take on h3. And uh, it will be a draw like... Yeah, you see what I mean. If I play something like this, you can take and we end up like this. Theoretical draw. Uh, Black will have to put in some effort, but it won't be that difficult, right? It's usually more difficult if, if it's rook and bishop versus rook. Rook and knight is not that difficult. All right. What about knight f3? Yeah, so if you play knight f3, yeah, good question. In the first place, we usually think that... Uh, how is it? Um, uh, F and H is a draw, right? We usually think that this is a draw. Uh, but the king should not be cut off, though. But I wonder if you can really keep this uh, situation. I don't think so. I think you, I can check you and I can probably go for the pawn. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's a win for white? Really? How do you win this, the Patriots? I, I, I don't follow. Oh, King G3. How, how, what did I miss here? I don't follow. You're, you don't mean here, I think. Because I'm I'm picking up the pawn next turn, right? Magical teleportation. Yeah, exactly. So this is not uh, going to, to work, right? All right. So you, you see what I mean here, guys? We have like this. This is a threat coming up. We cannot really prevent it, no? But why they won this game? They found like a very smart uh, plan to, to win this game. So I don't know if I should quiz you for this. I would actually prefer that you... Send me the in the chat if you send me like the best move and the plan. All right, send me, send me uh, White's uh, first move and uh, plan. Let's see here. Okay, Mecha Mortis, you're very close. You're very close. 
We have some king moves, one square in each direction, unless there's a piece that, yeah, I don't follow. So, Metza Mortis, I think you got it, you got it. Th this is what you played in the game, what, what you're saying. Could, but could you give me, like, some explanation? Why would you play like that, Metza Mortis? Why? If I understand correctly, Metza Mortis wants to play this move. Yeah, to try to win, I understand. We all want to win, but can you, like, explain it in a better way? What's the point of this move? Rook b6, go to g6, then g4. Yeah, that's very close. That's very close. That's basically the same thing uh, if you play like that. That's okay, I think. That's, it's, the same, uh, it's the same technique. But I guess you lose a move like, like that, no? Because if I take the pawn and you give check, I bring up the king. Let's say I go this way. Now you have to move the rook somewhere. But now, now we're talking. Yeah, this is, this is the point. This is the point. This endgame is much more tricky than you might think. Okay? Uh, that's that's more or less where White wants to, to, to... Knight is almost getting trapped. Exactly, uh, kind King Sam. You're right. So we're getting closer. We're getting closer. Yeah, all right. Ch chess art. You had, uh, you had an idea, right? Uh, or was it uh, Mecha Mortis? Uh, Sartak. All right, Sartak. Yeah, you, you, can, you can play then, all right? Where is Sartak? Here. Okay. Please go ahead, Sartak. White's first move here, what should it be? Rook b4, that's right, the rook is coming this way, black's the only move, knight takes h3, else this doesn't make sense. Now, uh, at this point, first try to limit the knight, make sure it cannot come back. Yeah, that's another interesting move, which I looked at also. There are some funny variations here. I can play like this, trying to get out this way. You can try to cover, but you can guess what I would play, right? Anyone? Knight f2, that's right. So knight f2, but white can continue here. White can continue. Yeah, don't play knight g1, I think. If you play knight g1, I think the knight is trapped in the end. King e3, maybe. This is very similar to the game. Careful that I might play this very soon. For example, if you just wait like this, I will win in this way, right? Well, I'm, I mean, this is... You see what I mean, right? This is what I'm aiming, aiming at with the white pieces here. So, yeah. Why did we... Yeah, so knight f2, and what would white play here? Rook f4. Yeah, something like that. Rook f4, and the knight is now trapped. Or maybe you can put the rook here also. I don't know if, if that's smart too. Maybe, or maybe not. Yeah, rook, rook f4, perhaps. So here it's also interesting. It's not clear that uh, the knight... The knight will have to go to h1, right? I don't know how well it's feeling on, on h1. But it might be a draw still. Rook f3. <laughs> exactly, we're dominating the knight now. So I don't know. I think it's very uh, scary for black still. Rook. Okay, this is maybe not a threat because there is knight f2. But uh, you see, we're trying here. We're trying to, to trap it somehow, the knight. All right. So this was a possible idea. In the game, they played rook g4. In the first place, this move is very clever because black's king cannot go this way. If it goes that way, what would happen? Yeah, now we can move the knight to f3 or to f5. And I, I think it's better to go this way, though, because we keep it far away from the knight. So now we're just threatening to, to pick up the knight next turn, right? But I guess knight f5 also works. Yeah, this, this probably works. But it's also nice if you put the knight on this side that you don't let them play knight g1, right? So I think this is completely winning for, for, for white. All right, so black saw this in the game, and they played at this point uh, king... Uh, F7, I think they played, right? King F7. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. So, how to continue here? How to trap the knight? Anyone? Knight F3 says L. Exactly. Knight F3. This is how they played in the game. Black must play Rook A2. You can guess the next move. Knight D2. Now, since the king is on f7, we, might, we may not play knight f2, right? Then we're losing the knight. So, they had to play here. Uh, yeah, this one is also not so good because you can just put the king here, I think, and you can already start thinking about maybe getting it, no? Or maybe the better plan is actually this and that, no? Interesting. They had to play rook a3. So, they did play rook a3 in the game. They, they played rook a3. Uh, but, you know, it's still a draw. It's the same story as always. No, it's still a draw. It's just getting more and more difficult. So white is saying, 
how on earth can I progress here? White is saying, because the rook should not move. It's it's uh, keeping track of the of the knight, right? But we can also not take knight f1. Interesting move. What would I play against knight f1? I guess I can give checks, maybe or, or no. Also, I have this square, right? I can maybe maybe I have like a perpetual here or something like that. Um, so the grandmaster at this point he noticed that the rook. He should try to like smoke out the rook. So he played at this point knight c4, I think. Let's see if I can get this right. Knight c4. And uh, also the knight might come to e3, right? So that we can take take this guy later. Rook a2. King e3. Knight g1. Black is trying to save the knight by all means. The knight wants to, to yeah, like uh, sneak away. However, uh, white found a nice maneuver here. Princess Megan says 92. Interesting move. If you play that, I guess I can come back, right? If I like. Oh, no. Yeah, it's it's very complex, this, this endgame. Uh, so, in the end, what they played here, I, I'm not sure I understand it myself completely, but they played here rook f4, and this is where the game is decided. For, for some reason, which I still don't understand completely, black should play here King e6. And after the move, rook f2, trying to trap the knight, black can play rook a1. And it seems as if black is still uh, alive in this in this endgame. It's not so easy to get at this knight, even if it's very badly placed. But look what happened in the game. They played very natural move. Uh, ag you agree with me that king g7 is more natural. We stay on the same file as the g-pawn. Of course, the pawn will never move. It's like the... How do you say? Like the prison guard for this knight. So it, it will, of course, never move. But it's very natural to play like that. So King G7 was played in the game. Now you can guess why it's next move here. Of course, uh, Mecha Mortis, Rook F2 first. Uh, they cannot take it. They played Rook A1. And here comes Storm move here. Storm move. Uh, well, not, not so much maybe, but it's it's a nice move. Yeah, they know that they should bring the King to F2. Knight B2, Knight D2, Rook D2. Exactly. Something like that. I think many moves uh, will work here. But Rook, th that, that's one we shouldn't play, no. Uh, but they played in the game rook c2. Now they're getting ready to play king f2. Black tried, of course, rook f1, so as to prevent this. But you can guess why it's the next move here. <laughs> yeah, very strange endgame. I, I must say I haven't seen this kind of endgames in a long time. Knight e2, of course, so that the rook leaves. Now we're very close to imprisoning the knight. They played in the game rook f6. And black was hoping here for a slip from white. I know what black was hoping for. So I'm sorry. So, so, don't don't send me the move. Don't send me the move. All right. Don't send me the move. Let us fix it uh, by a quiz. All right. Let's quiz this instead. One minute. All right, guys. Yeah, you fell in the trap, uh, Yugoslavian patriot Sartak. I like kebabs. You fell in my devilish trap. Little chess player. Another victim. <laughs> Don't think it's so easy. Okay, so random. Congratulations, you're the only winner so far. I'm sorry, Princess Megan, you fell in my devilish trap. Uh, we saw this uh, idea before. Okay, we have more win winners. Daniel Best, you got it. Gordon, Ryan, L, great work. Uh, but the list of people who fell in the trap is longer, unfortunately. Rook c7 check. I'm not sure what that's, what that's good for. It's probably not bad either, no? Um, yeah. It's probably... Tactical Magician, you're extremely close. Consider yourself a winner. That check, I guess, is just for showing who rules. So uh, we have more winners. L008, JV Nambra, Kwoki, you all got it. Great work. So please go ahead. Uh, Daniel Best, how do you finish off this uh, auto-flagged opponent? I see. Smart thinking. Please go ahead, Daniel. How do you continue here? Knight E4. Of course, the trap that we should not fall into is this one. Uh, anyone? Do you see that? Do you see the trap, Sathak? You see it now? Exactly. Rook e6, and we saw it already. Now, now it. Now there is no way back for White. I think because the knight has like too many squares where it can go. So uh, we should start by by the move um, that uh, who is saying this? Daniel saying knight e4. Exactly. So knight e4. Uh, how did the game continue? They played rook f1, of course, so as to prevent rook c1. But now the knight is getting a little closer. The rook has to stay at on the 
first rank because else rook c1 is, is indeed killing white black so they played rook b1 i think in this game and uh, it's time to, to pick up the knight aha king f2 you can see knight f1 is now concrete threat black tried rook b1 like last chance but white didn't lose their um, concentration here what did white play here <laughs> last last trick I'm sorry, Sartak, you ruined everything here that you have constructed. I'm very sorry. Now I can make it wrong. But the Grandmaster didn't do that. Of course, uh, L. Yeah, these checks, I don't know. What are they good for? No, but he just played Rook C1 here. And Black resigned. Uh -huh. So, strange game. No, oh, but they can take on G3. No, I'm just killing. K kidding, I mean. <laughs> That's how the game went. They played this in the game, and now he played Rook C7. So maybe in the end it was good to have this move in the pocket, right? Okay, but it didn't it didn't matter as long as you have it. But interesting game, no, interesting game. A lot of geometry with this knight and the, the, the forks and all that. So anyway, this is how it all started. White noticed that perhaps this is not winning, but we should at least uh, try to take our chances here. They played rook before they imprisoned the knight, and then we had a lot of yeah strange maneuvers and so on. Uh, yeah, l luckily many traps. Exactly. Luckily we did geometry. Exactly. Um, let's see what else I can I can show you here. Let's see what else. Uh, yeah, I had two more maybe. Yeah, let's see. Let's go back to uh, an endgame with more pawns on the board. Let's see if we can get this right. Yeah, this one is very nice. This is a very nice endgame, and these are very strong players also. So I think you will like this endgame. Let's see. Um, it's from the German Bundesliga. We have with white. Uh, Romanian Grandmaster Nisipiano and playing black uh, Grandmaster from Ukraine, Volokitin, very strong player. He has a very good book, by the way, Perfect Your Chess. That's a recommendation if you want to, to improve in chess. So anyway, they reached this position. You can see that White is having some initiative. Um, anyone, could you tell me what reason does White have to think that they might win this game? What is like White's main asset here? Anyone? Aha, white has more space. Whenever you have this kind of situation, first thing you should think that, okay, this is good for us. We can maybe try to create a pass one if we can get uh, get at this pawn and so on. And also one thing that nobody says so far, the knight and active pieces, black has a weak pawn structure, says Princess Megan, that's right. I would say that the kings, you should not forget about this. Um, whenever you have more space, we talked about this some time ago when we talked about space disadvantage. Whenever queens are off, the side with more space, they have like more possibilities for their king also. Anyway, this is like draw is endgame. Stockfish will say 0 0.3, 0 0.4, something like that. But uh, Nisipiano managed to win this endgame. So let's have a look. Uh, anyone, how do you think white should continue here? Or should I quiz you? All right, I'll quiz you instead. Uh, to make it more fun, I will quiz you. All right. Let's see. I'll ask you for the next two moves. That's it. It's so simple, so you you don't get too much time. Interesting move. Well, I guess I play bishop c5 maybe on, on your move. So a random. That's right. That's what the grandmaster played. Rook d7. That's also interesting. Half a point if you said rook d7. But I have a question for those of you who played rook d7. Which is the most tasty pawn of black's pawns here? Which is the one that you're most in mostly interested in? Think about that, please. Uh, which is the pawn that we would really like to get at here? All right. So we have some winners here. Sui Random, Adi Chess, Ryan. That's right. And very close, uh, Patriots, Prin Princess Megan, Little Chess Player, Inari, Pikachu, and so on. Yeah. All right, uh, Adi Chess. Please show us how did White uh, continue here. We start with this check. Of course, if black plays rook f7, uh, we can then play rook d7 and we get the, like a tempo for free. So black played in the game bishop f8 instead. And here we have interesting moves, several choices, but I think this is the best move. Rook e8, because now if black plays um, king f7, we can attack this pawn with check. Exactly. So some kind of intermediate moves or something like that in the end game. Uh, can be very helpful. If you said other moves here, knight d6, I don't think it's a bad move, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I can take the pawn? 
and try to to run with that problem no? or, or is this very bad for for black rookie eight maybe yeah i don't know maybe you can play like that also it's it's not completely clear to me uh what's going on here maybe but uh, i think what they played is more practical we don't care so much about these pawns we're mostly interested in that pawn so that we can later on push the the e pawn okay Let's see what happened here. In the game, they played uh, rook b5. Rook b5, eyeing the pawn on e5. That's perfectly fine. That's a good choice by Volokitin. Another option was maybe to take on a2 and play bishop c5. The computer was saying that this was okay for black. I don't know. I I would certainly prefer white, but yeah. Uh, material is equal and so on. The king is rather close. Maybe that was a better chance, but I mean, if the grandmaster didn't play it, it's probably not that that simple. No, maybe we can play like knight e6 and rook e8 and so on. So yeah, still chances to win here. Let's see what happened in the game. They played in the game rook b5. All right, black's point is clear. They give up the pawn in order to play king f7. All right, next move is for you guys. What do you think white should play here? That's right, Yugoslavian Berserker, so a random tactical magician, L, I like kebabs, elephant chess genius, little chess player, Quoki Patriots, Daniel Best. I'm always saying the same thing to you, this is still not winning, but we have chances, we are pushing them a little, we are putting some pressure on them. Uh, Quoki Patriots, Daniel Best, Hank, Princess Megan, you all got it, Skilled Saber, Awesome Owen, Pikachu. I'm convinced that's the best move here. Uh, if you play knight e6, I think that's a misunderstanding. No, you should not enter this uh, endgame. I think, I think black is perhaps better here. Or no, I can like bring over my king, or or no, or maybe not. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, maybe not. But not clear at least. Not clear, knight d6. Um, also, I can perhaps take it. No, I don't know. Is is this better? Hard to tell actually. Hard to tell if this is better. Uh, I think I go for the other endgame. If I if I have a choice, I would rather prefer this this endgame. Like e4, I, I could put my bishop here maybe. And, um, not so easy for white to progress. No, if you move the knight, I can perhaps enter with the king and so on. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, what's the best move here? A tactical magician, please go ahead. Let us know what should white uh, play at this point. That's right, rook d6, clever move, because if I now take the pawn tactical, you just get, exactly, you can just pick up this pawn and you get, like, a pawn for free. That's definitely an advantage that we can work on. I think, though, you could also take the pawn, right, like this, if you if you want, so that you attack this pawn also later on. Um, looks uh, pleasant for, for white, this, this endgame. So, yeah, rook d6, very smart move. And here we have the key moment. Here, black makes a crucial mistake. Um, so just for fun, just for fun, what do you think is... Everyone can see white's plan here, right? We would like to play maybe rook d6 or maybe e6. e6, I think, is like the main idea for white here, perhaps. Or is there some other plan? Um, the king is there also and so on. So what do you think black should play, anyone? You're right, Sui. Wow. Uh, incredible that you can find this move. I would say this is a typical computer move. No, no human player can find this easily, except uh, Sui Random. King G8, fantastic move. We just go back. We now threaten to take the pawn, so that if they play uh, King F4, we can just take on D6. And it's not really scary, no? It's not working. If you take with the pawn, I can just come back with the king. If you take with the knight, I mean, my king is so close anyway, so black is basically winning here. Like rook here and bring in the king. Incredibly enough, uh, king g8, that's the only good move in this position, king g8. You go back with the king. So why is that? Well, because you don't want to, to be in the, in the fork, right? You don't want to be in the fork. In the game, instead, black played the move king e8. This was a big mistake. This, having played this move, they actually lost the game here. So at this point, I will quiz you for the next moves here. Let's see if you can find... Well, I, I will just quiz you for one move here, all right? Yeah, great, uh, Sui. You, you find all the good moves. I hope you do that in your games also. So here comes the game changer. The next move is the game changer. Thanks to this move, uh, we will win the game. 
Oh, interesting. Can you play that also? If you go e6, I guess I go rook f5 check and I go rook e5. No? I think that cannot be correct, uh, L and Daniel Best and so on. Uh, so we random, Metamortis, Pikachu, Google Chess, Quoki, Princess Megan. That's right. Please go ahead, Pikachu, which was uh, your move here. We talked about this at the very beginning. White had a more active king. We can now take advantage of the situation. All right, I don't get any moves by Pikachu, so I'll ask uh, Kugel Chess instead. Please go ahead. Oh, no, there we go. Thanks, Pikachu. King f4, exactly. The king now enters, and you can see this pawn. It's not lost anymore. If you go e6, I'm just guessing that white could, black could play rook f5, and you move the king somewhere, and I could go king e rook e5. No, this is not good for you, I guess. Uh, right? So, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Play like uh, Pikachu said, King f4, like Nisipiano played in the game, King f4. Now there is no way back uh, because still we cannot take due to the fork, right? So now, now it's very difficult for Black. Now it's already winning endgame. They played Rook p1, desperately trying to get some counterplay. Uh, White first saved the Rook. And uh, the next move, uh, Pikachu, what did White play here? Or should I ask everybody? All right, I'll quiz everyone instead, okay? One of the last quizzes for today. Let's see if you can find the way in which the Grandmaster continued. All right, I'll just quiz you for one more. That's right, L, Kugel Chess, Patriots, Adi Chess, Gordon, active king in the endgame. That's a very important concept. That's exactly what White played. Before black is able to play king e6, we should uh, take control of that square, right? That's what happened in the game. All right, a lot of winners. JV Namra, Elephant, Skilled, Mecha, Ryan, HDI, Chess, Quoki, Pikachu, and so on. Please go ahead, uh, Google Chess, which was your move here. King f5, that's right. The king can come this way. It can also support the pawn in some variations. But most importantly, we don't let them play king e6. If you play something else here like knight e6, they are very happy to play king e6 with some kind of blockade. So king f5, it's a game changer. They played rook f1 in the game. I think there was more than one good option here, but what they played in the game made a lot of sense. They simply invited the trade of rooks. I guess if you play king g6, they can... I don't know, this looks nice also. I like this move, but maybe they can play like king e6 here. Perhaps, yeah. So why make things more complex? So rook f2 was played in the game. Uh, very difficult for black now. They played rook c1. Obviously, if they trade off, the knight can come back. This bishop is, is not active and so on. Uh, e6, king e5. Uh, many ways to play here. So they played in the game rook c1 instead. And the rest is not so difficult. Knight d6, king d7, king d7 white's uh, next move. Should I quiz you guys on this one also, maybe? Yeah, just to, to apply the, exactly L008, Yugoslavian, Mecha, Mortis, Elephant, Chess Genius, Princess Megan, Gordon, Chess Art, Khan, King Sam, Awesome, Owen, Patriots, Quoki, Google Chess, HDI, Daniel Best, Tactical Magician, Sui Random, Little Chess Player. Well, that's basically all of you, right? Little Chess Player, Adi Chess, Hank. Uh, most people got this one right. Uh huh. Maybe there were other moves also. Uh, I like kebabs have another has another uh, proposition here. Maybe I can go rook c6 there. If you go 94 kebabs, maybe I can play like that. And I will try to push you back somehow. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Interesting. But I think what uh, L008 said, for example, please go ahead, L, which was your move here. Active king in the endgame. I think this is much cleaner after all. Maybe we don't need this pawn to win the game. We can take the pawn on d7 and so on. Uh, that might be enough to win the game. They played in the game. If they take, I guess we can even play rook d2, right? Exactly. We can pick up this pawn later. In the game, they played bishop e7. And white played in very technical fashion, knight f5. I like this move because we are still uh, betting on this pawn, right? We're still trying to make it win the game. Black played bishop c5. And what do you think, uh, L? What do you think white played here? Nice move, no? 
Exactly, king f7. Black resigned, e6 is coming up. There is also rook d2. Interesting, now in only 12 moves. 12 moves they managed to win this game. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's impressive. That's how it started. White, they took their chances here. They played rook d8. And after bishop f8, uh, they started to attack this pawn on e e6. Black played rook b5. This was still a draw. White found this clever move. Rook d6, and here black had to make the unnatural move. Only Sui Random could find this move, king g8. Uh, but they didn't see this move in the game. They played instead king e8, and here we had our key move, king f4, and white was later on able to uh, win this game. Nice. I think that's it for today, guys. We will have one last session about uh, taking our chances. Then we will look into some other topic, all right? Thanks a lot. See you next time. Thanks, Chester Audio. Thanks to Greg Shahadi, USCS, Chessable, and so on. Thanks. Bye-bye.